Okay, sports fans, we are going to talk about some St. League tanks tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about, first and foremost, the M7 Priest tank. That was a, a hunter-killer uh, gun, mobile uh, artillery vehicle that was um, built on a, an M4 chassis. But before that, I think we'll talk about the forerunners to the M4 would be the M3. And tonight we're going to talk about the M3 Lee. No, oh, this is the M3 Grant, and this one was lend lease out to the, our friends across the pond because we have a bloke driving it, and uh, we sent a lot of M3s to to uh, England, and we actually did some uh, lend leasing of those to the Russians, and then we're also going to talk about the M3 Lees, and the difference between the Grants and the Lees, I think, basically were. <laughs> Just who was driving them? Is that what you were telling me? That's my understanding. All right. So let's uh, let's talk first of all about the leads. We're going to talk about this this uh, M3 Grant. This is the one that uh, uh, we lend leased over to the British, and they used them in the campaigns. This one's in the uh, North African colors, and uh, they got in North Africa with these uh, before we got involved with the war. So they were driving these quite a while before we got involved with the war. Um, these fought against Rummel. Okay, I want to do a disclaimer right now for any of you guys who get really nitpicky on our comments and stuff. We are not tank or World War II experts. We just find out a little bit of information. We have a lot of fun doing this, but for hell's sakes, don't think we're the final word or we even pay attention to what we're saying half the time because I'm too old and Adam's too busy filming. So, And he corrects me when he knows I'm wrong. But basically, I just want to say, let's have a good time looking at these things, you know, rather than worrying about if I cross my T's or dot my I's, okay? Sounds good. All right. Now, so let's talk about some specifications. What everybody was asking, how many people, what, how many crew members? So looking at this grant here, they put six people in that tank. Six? Yeah. Okay, now if it's a British tank, they'd have to have separate quarters for the officers with the uh, silver tray sets and mm -hmm. goblets yeah. and wine yes. racks and all that stuff. So where did they put the other five? If the officer, the commander, had his own suite of rooms in that tank. I, I don't know. Maybe they stuffed them in this turret here. Yeah, okay. All right, well, let's make a guess. Okay, six people in a lead. Now, that tank isn't any bigger than an M4. Nope. Okay, one thing I want to say about the Lees, the M3s was the predecessor to the M4. Mm -hmm. If you look at them, there's a lot of same to do with them. Look at the front. Mm-hmm. Very the, similar to them. Get an M4 over here to compare. You look at the, this drivetrain in the front of the M4, the like this, and the um, biggest difference is, is they got this big hemorrhoid gun sitting out there, <laughs> and a smaller gun on the turret where the M4. But anyway, they're the same basic. They use the same toggle type suspension. Yeah, the V V S S. Yeah. Raleigh type or toggle type or whatever. Like I said, I'm not an expert. I don't know what I'm saying. Our famous tank that has been underrated by me and others is the Sherman, but the, it was a derivative of the M3. And you can see that, a matter of convenience, that's how they ended up with the M4. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they fit six people in there. Fit six people in there. Good gravy. That would be. Boy, if somebody hadn't had a shower that morning or yeah. had bad gas or something, that would be a bad day. That would for be a everybody. bad day. Um, I, my bet is they had a loader and gunner for each gun. Yeah, there's two. Um, so four, yeah. Okay, loader, gunner, driver, commander, there's four. And then another loader, gunner for the other gun. Five, six. Probably a radio guy. Yeah. So anyway, see this long antenna here? Mm -hmm. That means it had a radio in it. So they had to have a guy run the radio. 
True. All right. All right. But okay, how much did it weigh? It weighed. It was thirty short tons or twenty-seven long tons. I still well, I don't understand they, the difference. I don't know. If somebody could let me know in the notes what the difference between a short and a long ton would be, that would be awesome. 30, 27 long tons or 30 short tons, should we say 28 and a half tons? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. What engine did it have in it? It had a radial engine, um, a Continental radial engine. Oh, okay, like the standard 9-cylinder Continental radial engine that the M4-3As all had? Yep. All right, so uh, six people, Continental engine, 27, 28 and a half tons, short or long of it. Mm-hmm. What's, what was this big hemorrhoid gun? Yeah, so that was actually a 75 millimeter gun. Oh, so it was the same size gun as we had in the Sherman? Mm -hmm. Was it the same gun or just pretty um, much? Or? Uh, I think it was the same gun or really similar. Okay. Um, obviously, it's mounted completely different. Yeah. What, what was the one up above? That was only a 30, 37. 37 millimeter. All right. Well, the turret obviously we go 360, but boy, the the the, the 75 millimeter gun just did not really have a limited. lot of very limited. It was like a tank destroyer type gun or something, you know, mm -hmm. just very. And that was just based on the uh, design, Americans' design experience when it came to big gun turrets. We just hadn't made that many during the war years. Uh, the interwar years between World War One and World War Two, we didn't design a whole lot of tanks, and so when it came to World War Two, um, we were a little in inexperienced when it came to mounting those bigger guns. Huh. Well, um, how many of them did they build, and what years did they build them? Yeah, so they started building them in 1941. Well, that's when they entered service. Yep, 1941. They were produced from 1941 to December of 1942. They served in service till 1955, um, though those would largely be in other countries. Uh, the number that they made was 6,258. So they made a good number of them. They is made that, a good number of them. Does that include the threes, too? I mean, the, the Lees, yeah. The Lees? Where'd the mm -hmm. Lees go? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, so it was about 2,000 for each country that used them in World War II. There was about 2,000 to the British, about 2,000. Uh, for the Americans and about 2,000 for the Russians. Yeah. All right. And then they used them, I guess, in all the theaters. They did. Um, the They were more successful uh, with the British in the early war. The Germans uh, were out, actually outgunned. Yeah. Uh, the early Panzer threes and Panzer fours were outgunned by the 75 millimeter gun. Yeah. And so the Lees were able to pop them off um, at a further distance than they were expecting. Uh, Rum, Rommel, uh, the German ace from Tank Ace, actually yeah. commented on how um, effective that gun was at, at range. So so the main competitor for the Lee was the Panzer III then? Yep, that early Panzer III. Yep, not an early, that's a, like an mm -hmm. aux, aux B or something. So that Yeah, and you can see just from a gun perspective, obviously we can't get a good grasp of how thick the armor is on these models, but just from a gun perspective, that's almost more like the 35 millimeter gun or 37 millimeter gun that this top one is, but this also has that 75 millimeter gun. Well, it's okay. So I got newfound respect for them. They're not, they're not nearly as ugly as they were a little while ago then. Yeah, they oh, were, so uh, they were kind of a, a slapdash uh, tank. Uh, the Americans. The British needed them real quick because Germany was rolling over Europe and uh, they asked the United States to build the tanks for them. Mm -hmm. And so we did. Uh, but they, by both sides, they were admittedly a little bit more slapdash than they wished they would have. And that's why the M4 was... Slapdash, mean just kind of thrown together yeah. because the war started? Yeah. Okay. Slapdash. I haven't heard that before. That's good. No, I, I don't know that it's actually a thing, but I say it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've heard you say it before. I've only known you for a year, though. Yep. All right. All right, so that's a bit kind of for the Lees. They built 6,000 of them the, by the British or the Allies. So we'll say the British, the uh, Russians, and the, the U.S. each had them, and they used them in all uh, theaters of the war. And um, 
guess they were pretty uh, pretty comparative to the Panzer threes or better than the Panzer threes when they came out. So that I could see why they could uh, you know worry about them. I just I just always thought it was funny they had that weird, weird that turret up there. Yeah. yeah, but you know, but if you look at the older tanks, they all did. Yeah. They all put the more turrets the better. You know, you see <laughs> yep. like in World some of those ones between World War One and World War Two, you know, in the nineteen thirties they put the turret on each side and Right. Yeah, they, they were ugly bastards and the the both the French and the British uh had had tanks. The Mark I think it was the Mark One in Britain and I c I don't know French so I the can't even, or yeah, it's I can't called, even yeah. tell you what the name was. And that, that was that a huge one. one. That was like mm -hmm. ninety tons and about Eight miles long and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they only built five of them. But, yeah. Some other things to note: uh, even though the they were lend least to the Russians, the Russians did not find them as helpful. Uh, by that point of the war, uh, they had developed their T thirty fours, T thirty fours, and uh, the Germans had already started. Upgunning their Panzers, so it just wasn't as get into the Panzer fours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just wasn't as effective against uh, on, on the eastern side. They did see very little use in the Pacific Theater, um, as was the case with all of these with all the tanks in World War Two. Very, if if at all used, they were used very little um, in the Pacific Theater. These would see a little bit of uh, use in the Pacific Theater on the Marshall Islands. Okay. Okay. Now let's let's talk about let's talk about the main event tonight, the one we really wanted to talk about. Another derivative of the M3 or kind of the M4 would be the M7, and it was a hunter killer. It was a, just a mobile howitzer. So it wasn't a tank. It was more of a hunter a hunter killer or self-propelled tank self destroyer. Self-propelled howitzer, or self-propelled how um, tank destroyer, and so them seven priests, they, they came along a little bit later in the war, but they were built again off of the M4 chassis. So the M3 led to the M4, and the M4 did he die? He, he got did. shot by a sniper. Yep. Uh -oh. He flopped over on us. All right. Well, poor guy. Poor guy. Anyway. Um, so the M3 begat the M4, and the M4 begat the M7. Roughly. Uh, roughly. So the the early M7s were actually built off of the M3 chassis also. Oh, okay. So this would be a later M4 then. Yes, that one's a later uh, M7. Yeah, M7. Built off of the M4 chassis. Yeah, and this one would actually, the way the front of it looks like, this would built been off of a, a jumbo, a M4 jumbo maybe, because it had the smooth... Fronts, you know, it didn't mm -hmm. have the didn't have that rivet. The rivet is the one piece front on it, so maybe that's a little bit later one in the war then. But uh, what size of the gun is it? that? Done? That's a pretty serious uh, piece of artillery in that one. Yeah, that's a hundred and five millimeter. Okay, so it's a good gun. It's, it's yeah, a, so it's not quite as big as the biggest guns, um, like the hundred and fifty of the KV two or the hundred and twenty, hundred and twenty two of the. Some of the later German ones, but it was still sizable. Um, it was bigger than the than like the Panthers or um, Tigers yeah. uh, with those eighty eight millimeter guns. So uh, it's even bigger than the Pershing gun, which was a ninety. So they just millimeter. took a one hundred five howitzer and stuck in here, basically. Yep. Yeah. All right. So how much? Uh, so had had obviously more than a crew of three. How many did they? It had a crew of eight. No way. There was eight people in there. Oh, wouldn't that be awful? Crammed in there, seven people, eight people in there. I I don't know what all the eight people were doing. Um, the little reports on the crew didn't didn't tell me their roles, but I feel like half of them were just pointing their guns off the side, just. Loaders riding, yeah, riding along. Maybe, maybe shotguns. Maybe, yeah, you know, keeping people. Yeah, they were riding okay. shotguns. I thought it was really interesting why they called it the priest. Why did they call it the priest? Yeah, I thought this was funny too. So uh, the 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 nickname priest came when uh, the UK, the British, um, got a hold of it. We sold it to them as well, and they thought that this turret here, this machine gun turret, looked like a priest's pulpit. 
Um, and so they called it the priest. The other, th the other reason they called it a priest is they had two other tanks, and one of them I think is the most atrocious tank I've ever seen. Uh, the bishop is so ugly. Um, but they had a bishop and a deacon, and so they have. When they got ours, they called it the priest. Okay, does this have the same uh, radial engine as the um, as the uh, M4? So it starts with the radial engine. It has um, that, that VSSFF. Yeah, it also has that vertical suspension. Yeah. Yep, um, the VVSS. Uh, so it would start with a radial engine, um, but just like the M4, uh, later on it would have a Ford um, V8. Oh, the big V8, the yeah. 500 horse V8? Yep. The same as the jumbo then. Right. So that's when they went to the jumbo chassis, then they or the newer chassis, they put mm -hmm. the V8s in them. Yep. Yeah, okay. So seven, eight, eight crew? Crew of eight, yeah. Crew of eight, V8 engine. Uh, how much did it weigh? It weighed five, uh, 50,000 pounds. So 25 tons. Yeah. Okay. Are those long or short tons? No idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. this one says 22... 0.97 metric tons. Oh, so we're going from long to short to metric? Yeah. Oh, jeez, oh me. <laughs> Why can't they just decide on one? It sounds like Congress or somebody. I know. All right, so anyway, kind of a fun gun. Okay, numbers. How many did they build and where did they use them? So it was used all over. Um, there, it comes out to about 4,300, 4,400 total. Okay. Um, but 127 of those were built after World War II. Okay, only 127 after World War II. So yeah. how many did you say? 4,300. Yeah. So 40, 4,300 were built. Okay, in, let's call it 4,300. Yeah. yeah. If they're used after World War II, that's not our problem. That's somebody else's problem. All right. Well. Kind of an, an interesting engineering thing. They'll kind of like the. The M3s, with this ugly turret here, they have this other turret up here that they refer to as the priestly pulpit, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, so they they went back to this kind of thing, but I think putting the 50 cal up there is a lot more practical than putting a 75 millimeter. Yeah, it was you know, one of um, the one of the things they found was they couldn't you couldn't have the hole down. Um, so let's show it with this here. Let's say you've got a hill or a wall or something up to this high, right? You can still fire, yep. right? And you can still have your main gun firing. But if you've got a similar situation here, you just cut off your main gun. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, of course, the Sherman, you can, you can rotate that all the way around. There's obviously very limited mobility on that turret. So the Sherman would have been the first 360 turret that the Americans made. Well, except this is a 360 turret. It's okay, just, a, okay, just yeah. a smaller gun. Smaller gun, okay. Yeah. But th so then this would have been the first single turret tank that they made. But we can't say that for sure because we don't know. Yeah, the Stuart might have, the Stuart light tank might have been a single turret. Yeah, but there wasn't a turret. It was a fixed gun too, mm -hmm. wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to do another one on that. Like I said, we don't know anything. We just like to play with our tanks. And they're cool. They are so cool. Yeah. You know, one of the things I wanted to go over is how fast they go, because I think that's fascinating. Yeah, I think so. Um, even though most of them end up coming about the same speed. Uh, the Priest went 24 miles per hour okay. on the road, or 15 miles an hour off-road. So, a good clip, about average. About average, yep. And the Lee went 26 miles per hour on the road and 16 miles per hour off-road. Oh man, so it's slightly like, faster. I was gonna say twice as fast at least. <laughs> yeah, this guy just leaning over, he looks like he's gonna puke or something. I don't know. All right, this one's Robin Hood. Yeah, this this def oh he's this is definitely look it's got the the uh, British markings on it. Yeah, that one's definitely a grand. Yeah, so and this one's definitely a Lee with the big old. Diamond and it says Kentucky on it. Yeah, it even has an L up front. I yeah. wonder if that was particular to the Lee's. Lee 3. All right. I don't know, but pretty darn interesting. It, you know, I just am amazed at the ingenuity of the engineering. Now, as a mechanical engineer, and I say this every time, 
that's what fascinated me about these tanks. And, you know, somebody who just thinks that they're, you know, like, you can't worry about how many billions of people they killed or anything else like that. They're just fascinating machines and how fast around they would adapt whatever they had, you know, for, for them to go from a Lee to a, a Sherman to a priest, you know, within a matter of a year or so. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to me that the adaptability in the war times that everybody had to do this. Now, they are not only doing that thing, they're doing those with airplanes, they're doing them with uh, Liberty ships, they're doing them with every aspect of war. Yep. And, you know, so, all right. You got anything else you want to say? I don't think so. They're cool, cool okay. tanks, cool I, early American tanks. I I think this is great. I learned a lot about the Lee and the um, Priest tonight that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I've had them in my collections for quite a while, and that guy's still dead. And um, I just, uh, we're going to have to notify his family. Yep. You got to do this one. I had to do the last one. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, for them to, to go and build these different tanks, and then the willingness of the Americans to help help the other allies. Anyway, everybody had their own sets of problems, but it seemed like for a long time the, the, the Americans were helping uh, where they could, and I think that's great. Yeah. So, uh, All right. All right. Well, without further ado, thank you guys for listening and tuning in. and Subscribe, damn it.